Hello and welcome to GameShack. Today I'm taking a look at the Virtual Boy and every single game that was released for it, and a few that weren't. Okay, I can't do these scenes this way. Hold on. Alright. These on-camera segments can be a slight reprieve for your eyeballs between the game segments. And before we talk about those games, let's take a closer look at what the Virtual Boy actually is. The Nintendo Virtual Boy After the wild success of the Game Boy, creator Gunpai Yokoi led the department that would create the Virtual Boy, a standalone headset that utilizes two monochrome LED screens with parallax effects to simulate a 3D effect. The red color was chosen because it was cheaper and it uses less battery power. With the technology of the time, Yokoi states that users did not see depth with the full color LCD screens that they tried. The Virtual Boy ultimately suffered during development as the Nintendo 64 was being planned at the same time, so internal resources were limited. The Virtual Boy controller is interesting as it has two D-pads, one on each side. It also has your standard B and A buttons, Start and Select, and L and R buttons that rest under your index fingers. The controller also contains the power supply for the system. Either a pack of batteries can be used, which lasts about four hours, or a Super Nintendo AC adapter. Believe it or not, the Virtual Boy is a 32-bit system using the same CPU found in NEC's ill-fated PCFX console, the V810 running at 20 MHz. It also has 1 MB of DRAM and 512K of PSRAM cache. The Virtual Boy runs at 50.7 frames per second with 32 levels of redness intensity and 6 channels of stereo sound. The system is known for giving players headaches, so each game has an auto-pause feature which pauses gameplay after 30 minutes to give you a chance to rest. This can be disabled whenever you power up your game. For this episode, I'm using a cool, consoleized Virtual Boy to record the game, so the gameplay you see here is being run on original hardware. The Virtual Boy was a huge failure, selling less than 800,000 units with only 22 games being released worldwide. Why Nintendo didn't see this system as a bad idea during the concept stages is beyond me. But it did make it to the market with a whopping 14 games released in North America and 19 released in Japan. And like I said, we're going to take a look at each of them, though not necessarily in the order in which they were released, but it doesn't really matter because they were all pretty much released in 1995. Anyway, let's get to the games. Mario's Tennis was the pack-in game for the Virtual Boy in 1995. You wouldn't think it would be wise to pack in a sports game, but as you probably know, the Mario line of sports games are all pretty darn good. The thing is, though, is that this is a straight-up tennis game and it doesn't have any of the fancy power-ups or items that the later games would have. Still, it's pretty fun. You can pick from one of eight characters for a single match or tournament play. Each opponent has their own background, but the courts themselves are always the same. This one really relies on the 3D effect to judge the position of the ball. It's really hard to play in 2D since the ball doesn't have a shadow on the ground to tell you where it is. The 3D effect is really good though, and I love how the court moves around. I do feel that the control could be a bit better as it does feel a bit stiff, but for its time it was fine. The music is good and the game is fun, and it's interesting to see where Mario Tennis held the entire Mario sports franchise began. Red Alarm from t and &E Soft attempts to put the virtual in Virtual Boy. This is a shooter where the visuals are completely wireframe. You fly around and destroy things, making your way through the stage. Eventually, you'll be able to fight a boss. It reminds me of a primitive version of Star Fox. The controls take a bit to get used to, but once you do, there's a lot to like here. Button A speeds you up, while button B slows you down and can even make you go in reverse. The left D-pad will steer your ship left, right, up, and down but you'll also need to use the right D-pad as it gives you a quick burst of speed enabling you to strafe horizontally and vertically. You fire your guns with the R button. Like I said, it takes a bit to get used to. 
You only have one life, but you can continue from the last stage you made it to if you die. It's really fun shooting down the enemies and flying through the wireframe corridors. Perhaps the best part of the game, though, is that it's constantly telling you T and Esoft presents Red Alarm Nintendo Virtual Boy. It literally never stops writing that on the screen. You know, in case you accidentally think you're playing the Vectrex or something. I like wireframe graphics like this for some reason. Like flat shaded polygons, it's an aesthetic that I never get tired of no matter how primitive it looks. So it goes without saying that I enjoy the visuals even if they can be a bit confusing at times. The music is pretty nice as well. This is a game that will keep you coming back at least a few times and I recommend it. Here's Golf from t and &E Soft. Golf is what t and &E Soft usually makes, but this is subpar even for them. If you've played any other golf game, this is set up in a similar fashion. It's certainly no Hot Shots Golf, but eventually it'll get used to its timing and how everything works. The 3D effect isn't bad as it uses polygons to fill in the course, but the dithering used to shade the game can mess with your eyes a bit in 3D. At first, it's really hard to get any accuracy in your shots. The repetitive music doesn't help things at all either. Plus, there's no Craig Stadler anywhere. This is an average golf game at best. Up next is Mario Clash. So a blimp comes in and puts its flag on top of an extremely tall tower. I mean, look how tall this thing is. For whatever reason, Mario is having absolutely none of that. So he enters the tower and he must clear it floor by floor. This plays kind of like an updated version of the original Mario Brothers. At least that's what it reminds me of. You need to clear the level of all the turtles. Yeah, I know they're not called turtles. I just said that to trigger you. You can't jump on the armored ones because if you do, you die. So you need to capture the innocent ones without armor and then toss them into the other enemies. Some enemies can't be attacked head on, so you need to hit them with a shell thrown from across the screen. There's a slight puzzle aspect to it all. The level layouts get more and more complex, making it harder to attack the enemy. I like the concept here, but it personally didn't hold my interest for very long. I still think that you should give it a try though. Okay, okay, these Virtual Boy games do take a little bit of getting used to, but we're gonna get through this, you and me, together. Let's continue with Galactic Pinball. Welcome to Space World, let's go. It's time for some 3D pinball action with Galactic Pinball from Intelligent Systems. Well, actually, maybe it should be called Galactic Puck because you control what appears to be an air hockey puck instead of a pinball. You can select from four different tables to play on. None of them are very inspired or even interesting, honestly. In fact, the same could be said about the entire game itself. It's standard pinball action, but with a puck. You view the board at an angle, which gives it a decent 3D effect. Speaking of 3D effects, this high score screen does a pretty good job. But as far as gameplay goes, it gets boring kind of fast. The physics are okay, certainly not great. Sometimes something will happen, which is almost interesting, like becoming some sort of gun thing and you need to shoot down comets as they come on screen. I like the variety, but it's hard to control it when this happens. You probably won't be sinking a ton of time into this one unless you really enjoy pinball at its most basic level. Tetris came to the Virtual Boy courtesy of t and &E Soft. Basically, you're piling blocks in an area which is always moving around so that you can see it at all of the different angles. Your goal is to fill an entire level so that it disappears. 
Over on the right is a 2D representation of each level to help you see what has blocks and what doesn't. Now I'm not the world's biggest Tetris fan, but I'd rather play regular Tetris any day over this. It does get a bit more challenging in the upper levels with segmented blocks and it's tough to fill the floor. Tetris just isn't a game that needed reinventing. However, V-Tetris by Bulletproof Software, which came out only in Japan, is much better. What can I say? It's Tetris. At least it's regular Tetris. It doesn't try to be anything that it shouldn't. It offers a few different graphical backdrops and musical selections, which is nice. I can't really say anything more about it, mainly because it's basically just Tetris on the Virtual Boy. But I feel that real Tetris fans will definitely like V-Tetris more than 3D Tetris. Well, I think anyone would, really. This is Jack Brothers by Atlas, probably the most sought after game on the Virtual Boy. It's very expensive, especially the North American version. Believe it or not, this game is part of the Megami Tensai series. That's right, this game is actually related to Persona in some weird way. You play as one of three Jack Brothers whom you choose at the beginning. You're visiting Earth for Halloween, but it's almost midnight and if you don't get back soon, you'll be trapped forever. So a little fairy decides to help you out and show you the way back. Jack Brothers plays as an overhead twin stick shooter, though you can't shoot diagonally. You don't really need too much though. Also, it should be noted that your attack is different depending on which character you choose. You also have a bomb that you can use. Your life is actually the counter that's ticking down in the upper left corner, so always be sure to pick up extra time when you see it. Your main goal is usually to collect the keys on a level which will let you jump down to the next. You'll defeat lots of enemies along the way. Once you get to the lowest level in a stage, you fight a boss. These bosses can take quite a few hits, but at least they have a life bar. The game is really fun for what it is, and I love going around everywhere looking for keys and getting power-ups that make me invincible. The scaling is a little chunky when you drop down a level, but at least there's some smooth rotation effects here and there. The music is great too. However, one thing that really bothers me is that each time you jump down to a new level, the fairy slowly comes in, tells you some nonsense that you could have easily figured out on your own, then slowly flies away before you can take control. I found this very annoying as it interrupts the action for no reason and you can't skip it. <sighs> now what do you want? At least there's a password feature though. Like I said, this one is crazy expensive, so you probably don't want to buy it. Maybe rent it for a dollar instead. Virtual League Baseball from Chemco is a rather boring baseball game. It's video baseball at its most basic level. If you've played any other video baseball game before, you've probably played a better game than this. The controls are stiff and even slightly laggy, so it takes some time to get used to when you need to swing the bat. Controlling the outfielders isn't much better as you move all of them at once and everything is super tiny. They also don't automatically try to run towards a fly ball. The visuals are pretty bad and the sound doesn't do the game any favors. I'd suggest that you play, well, pretty much any other baseball game. SD Gundam Dimension War is a strategy game that was only released in Japan. You and the enemy both take turns moving along a grid and attacking when you're within range of each other. 
The problem is that I have a hard time telling what's the enemy and what's my team. Eventually you can attack, but this game just isn't set up very well at all. I can see why nobody bothered translating this and releasing it in North America. Don't waste your time with this clunky turd. Space Invaders Virtual Collection is another one that was only released in Japan. And that's exactly what you get, Space Invaders. You can play the original Space Invaders or Space Invaders Part 2 in 2D. Part 2, which was known as Space Invaders Deluxe in North America, is basically the same thing with a few minor changes like enemies that split apart when shot. Both of these games can also be played at an angled view with an added depth effect. No matter how you slice it, it's just Space Invaders. If you like that though, then there's no reason you won't enjoy this. Here's Tolero Boxer. In this boxing game from the future, you play as a pair of disembodied hands and you need to beat the snot out of another robot. The left D-pad and the L button controls your left hand, and the right D-pad and the R button controls your right hand. The control doesn't feel as smooth as I'd like, but you do get used to it. Each robot has their own weak spots as well as their own tells and attacks. It follows boxing rules for the most part, so the fights can take a while. Between rounds, you can mash buttons to get some of your life back. I'm not very good at games like this, so that's probably why I couldn't really get much into this one. Nothing here makes me want to keep putting time into it to get better either. At least the 3D effect is pretty good. However, if you're a big fan of Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, then this is definitely worth a try. Virtual Fishing was only released in Japan from Pack-In Video. This is a fairly relaxing game if you like fishing games, I suppose. First, you choose where you'd like to fish. Then you might have to read a lot of text if you can read that. You can only cast your line straight ahead, then you start reeling it in hoping to get a snag. If you do, press the R button to go into the exciting fish battle screen. Here, you'll see a side view of the fish with some nice parallax scrolling effects. Be careful because otherwise it may get away and you'll have to start over. But if you do it right, you'll catch the fish and it will die. There might be more to this one, but there's a definite language barrier going on here. Otherwise, it's a fairly decent game. Hang in there, we've still got every single Virtual Boy game I haven't covered yet to go. And dare I say, a few of them might actually be good. <music> vertical Force from Hudson Soft is a vertical shooter, as you may have guessed. It's your standard shooter, but with a twist. That's right, you can now press a button to go down into the screen. You fight the game on two levels, a low one and a high one. Enemies are usually on both levels at any given time and you can only destroy those on the same level you're currently on. Sometimes the stages will even have obstacles like these ridges that you need to fly under to avoid. This game really does its best to take advantage of the 3D feature. As a shooter, it's pretty basic. You have some power-up shots, but nothing here is very interesting once you get over to 3D gimmick. Each stage has a mini-boss and a stage boss which does its best to fight you on both planes. The graphics are sparse and honestly the music isn't very good. Oh, and Blade Eagle 3D on the Sega Master System already did this same exact concept in 3D seven years before this, and it also wasn't very interesting. At least it had better music though. At the end of the day, this is a rather forgettable shooter.
Panic Bomber is also from Hudson Soft. This is one of those match three puzzle games where you battle an opponent. I usually prefer these to Tetris. And the good news is that this one is pretty fun. Obviously, it's based on the Bomberman universe. It plays like most MASH 3 style puzzle games with a few twists. You can lay bombs down, but of course they don't go away when you match them. Eventually, you'll get a bomb that'll explode when you set it down, so try to make sure it blows up all of the other bombs. The visuals are good and the music is even better. I thought this would be hard to play on the Virtual Boy's red and black screen, but amazingly it's easy to discern the different icons in order to match them. Overall, I was actually surprised at how much I enjoyed this one. I didn't want to stop playing. Nestor's Funky Bowling from Sapphire is based on the incredibly exciting character from the Nintendo Power magazines. You play as Nestor or his sister in their quest to knock over pins with a heavy rolling ball. The meters that dictate how you throw the ball are extremely easy to understand but hard to master. The game moves at a brisk pace and as a result it feels very energetic. The cool animations of Nestor or his sister reacting to their shots also add to this. As a game it's very arcade-like which of course I approve of. It's not the best bowling game in the world, but honestly, it's not bad at all. You even get three music selections, though the music stops playing when you hit the pins. This one was only released in North America. Virtual Bowling, on the other hand, was only released in Japan, this one from Athena. You'd think that with only 22 officially released games worldwide that the Virtual Boy wouldn't even have one bowling game, much less two of them. This one plays at a much slower pace, but it has cool scaling graphics which of course I think are pretty cool. Which I just said, I just said cool twice, whatever. It's cool. Yeah, they're a little chunky, but that's okay. The ball throwing meter here is a little bit more complex, but it's still mostly intuitive after a few throws. The music is decent, but the voices sound like a low-budget Genesis game. I still had a lot of fun with this one, and I scored way better than I do in real-life bowling. Waterworld is another really rare and expensive one. Like the movie it's based on, it's kind of a mess. You play as Kevin Costner on his little boat. In the water are people that look like they need to be saved, but you can't rescue them like you think you need to do. Instead, the evil smokers come in on their ski doos I mean sea doos and try to capture the people who are desperately treading water for some reason. You need to shoot down all of the sea doos and keep the people in the water, called atollers, alive in order to complete the level. That's it. Each level, another person will be thrown into water for you to keep alive and there will be more sea dews. You move around slowly with either D-pad and fire with the L or the R button. The graphics can get a bit choppy and confusing sometimes. The music by Jonathan Dunn is actually really nice and relaxing, but it doesn't fit the action at all. That's fine by me because the action isn't exactly great. If you want to spend close to $400 for five minutes of fun, I can't recommend this one enough. Virtual Lab is a puzzle game which was only released in Japan by J-Wing. As far as I can surmise, you're trying to build one giant intestine with the pieces of organs that are dropping. You can flip them around and if you make a self-contained organ, it disappears. But that can be pretty tough to do. 
This game screams low budget. The graphics are pretty bad, the music is barely there, and for some reason the girls' boobs will twitch on their own for no reason every few seconds or so. I guess that's the game's main draw. Definitely the worst puzzle game on the console, if not the worst game period. This one is called In's Mouth No Yakata, or something like that, and it was only released in Japan by IMAX. This one is a first-person game where you need to wander the hallways, gather orbs and keys, and find the exit. But be careful, because there are evil monsters who don't want you to accomplish this simple task, as it simply doesn't align with their personal agendas. And their agenda is to kill you. You have a limited number of bullets to fight these monsters, so it's best to avoid them if you can. Be careful though, because they really want to get you and will even break through walls to do so. Fortunately, there is a password feature and unlimited continues. The depth effect is decent, but you move and turn in very core steps like the old Might and Magic game, so it's very hard to tell what you just did. Even just one extra frame of animation, one frame, would have helped a ton. Try this one if you can. Space Squash was released only in Japan by Coconuts Japan Entertainment. Yeah, this is basically 3D Pong. You control a robot and you bounce some sort of globule back and forth. You move with the left D-pad and you can press either left, up, or right with the right D-pad to hit the globule. Depending on how you hit it, the direction will change, slightly. The goal is basically just to get your opponent to miss three times. Generally, this is kind of fun and can even get fairly challenging. You can even grab some power-ups, but that takes more luck than skill. Then you get to this snake boss. It's incredibly tough to aim the globule and he's constantly moving around. Of course, he requires a crap ton of hits before he dies. It takes forever and it gets boring really fast. I eventually died after about 10 minutes or so of trying to hit him and then he goes and resets back to his first form. Yeah, no thanks. That's when I shut the game off and I never plan on playing it again. Finally, we have Virtual Boy Wario Land. Yep, that's what it's called, just in case you didn't know this was a Virtual Boy game. Now this is more like it. It's an actual full-fledged game that could easily exist on other platforms where it would get a ton of love. But as of right now, it's still a Virtual Boy exclusive. Someone has stolen Wario's treasure and now he's on a mission to get it back. At least that's what I surmise while watching the epic cinematic cutscene at the beginning. Wario can jump and shoulder smash like usual. Get hit and you become tiny bald Wario and you can't do a shoulder smash. Throughout the game you can get different hats which will give you different powers. Like the bullhorns to smash big blocks. Or the dragon which shoots fire and so on. You go through the game collecting hearts and coins, looking for a key to unlock the level's exit. Sometimes you can jump into the background when you find these little plates on the ground. There's not much strategy to this, it's just kind of tacked on. That's fine though, as it doesn't slow the game down at all and it's still fun to do. Between levels, you have a chance to play through some bonus games if you want. Eventually, you'll make it to a boss. These can be pretty tough until you figure them out. Then they're so simple that you wonder why you ever had any issues. I like that. The graphics are perfect all things considered and the depth effect is decent. Even the music is great for this title. It definitely makes you feel like you're playing a proper Nintendo game. This is the best game on the Virtual Boy, and it's a shame that it didn't show up in 3D on the 3DS when Nintendo had the chance. Even a remake in 2D would be fine, as you really don't need 3D to play this at all. If you own a Virtual Boy, this is definitely a must-have.
That was every single Virtual Boy game released worldwide. But I'm not done, no. I want to show you a few prototypes that were in development that never got released. In addition to that, I want to show you a few cool things that the homebrew community has been up to. Because why not? Faceball from Bulletproof Software was going to come to the Virtual Boy. Oh man, did the world ever miss out or what? Faceball is a primitive first-person shooter of sorts. You wander around a maze and shoot your opponents before they shoot you. Generally, they're just minding their own business and not trying to hunt you down, but they will still defend themselves. Clear the level of opponents to advance to the next. Sometimes when you kill an opponent, you can collect a power-up which will let you move faster or whatnot. Flashing walls can be destroyed if you shoot them to open up passages to the rest of the level. If you press select, you'll bring up a map of the level which will also show you where the creatures that you need to murder are. Overall, it's playable, but far from exciting. The animation is decent as you freely roam around. This ended up being cancelled simply because the Virtual Boy was a flop. This is Bound High from Japan System Supply. That's right, they supply Japan with systems. Okay, yeah, that was weak. This is a game where you play a bubble and you bounce up and down on a playfield. In order to clear a stage, you need to bounce on all of the other bubbles that are roaming around. You're actually a robot, but I prefer calling him a bubble. The depth effect in this one is pretty cool, and I like things that scale like this, so right away I was kind of enjoying this. There's really not much to this game, at least at this point in its development. There are some obstacles that you'll have to deal with on the ground and even an occasional gust of wind. I made it to the boss stage and it appears there's no boss yet. I've read in places that this leaked ROM is supposed to be complete, yet there's no boss. I think a boss fight using this method could be fun. There's even a mode that's kind of like mini golf or pool where you need to knock the fuzzballs into a hole. This was actually the predecessor to the mega hit Chalvo 55 on the Game Boy. Bet you didn't know that, unless you did. This game was cancelled due to the Virtual Boy itself being a huge pile of fail. There's even some full-fledged homebrew games. Did you know that somebody even ported Snatcher over to the Virtual Boy? I'm amazed how close this is, all things considered. I only played for a few minutes, so I don't know if the entire game is here, but they did a remarkable job, and it's quite snappy. Even the music is here, though it's very low and grainy. Then there's Mario Combat. In this one, you have a gun, and Bowser is moving back and forth. You can't shoot him, only the things that he tosses at you. Obviously this is very incomplete, but I think it could probably be fun if it were fleshed out a bit more. The homebrew community even created a Game Boy emulator for the Virtual Boy. This is pretty crazy because there's no way the Virtual Boy could ever run these games properly. Some games run better than others. Blaster Master Boy here is almost playable. But did you ever think that Castlevania the Adventure was just too fast? <laughs> of course you did. Well, now you can finally play it at a sane speed. You can adjust the depth of these games so that they appear a bit further back in the window, but that's the extent of the 3D effect. This is super cool that they were able to do this, but honestly, this isn't a great way to play Game Boy games. Or how about Mario Kart Virtual Cup? This gives you a taste of what Mario Kart could have been like on the system. Unfortunately, there's nobody to race against, so it's just a time attack against the clock. 
I do like how they were able to pull off some rudimentary Mode 7 here. Rainbow Road has never looked so colorful. A better racing game might be VB Racing. Granted, there's not much game here as you're only racing the clock, but at least there's other cars on the road. No Mode 7 here, but there are some really smooth hills, and you know I love smooth hills in my racing games. There are some smoothly scaling sprites as well. Unfortunately, there's no sound at all, and your life will be ruined if you hit a tree. Eventually you can get loose if you keep hitting the gas and steering towards the road. The best homebrew has got to be Hyper Fighting. I'm not sure, but I think this one might be based on Street Fighter 2. Kind of hard to say. I've got to be honest, I can't believe this is running on my Virtual Boy. All of the characters are here and selectable. The controls take a while to get used to since the B and the A buttons aren't even mapped to anything. The good news though is that the game allows you to remap them. The right D-pad is used for some of the attacks and it's weird, but kind of interesting at the same time. Once I got used to everything, I was able to do fairly well. I did have a few issues pulling off the special moves consistently, which isn't surprising. Still, the game runs fast and it feels quite responsive without a hint of slowdown. There's some graphic garbage when it switches screens, but aside from that, the game feels professionally done. Hell, it's done better than most legitimate Virtual Boy games. There's a depth slider so you can get some cool 3D depending on the stage. Speaking of stages, most of them are from Street Fighter 2, but not all. I mean, why fight Balrog in Las Vegas when you can fight him at some waterfalls in South America instead? The graphics are amazing for the system, if a little bit stretched to fit the Virtual Boy's aspect ratio. Almost every stage here is one-to-one -one with other versions. There are a few stages that lose parts of the background, but Dalsim's stage has all three rows of the elephants. The 16-bit versions only have two rows. That's right, only the Virtual Boy has the 32-bit power needed for all six elephants. There's tons of parallax scrolling as well, which is enhanced by the 3D effect. The character sprites all seem to have most of their animation as well. Even the music sounds pretty good. Many of the voices have made it in, and they also sound good. I wonder how this would have fared if this were a real release on the system back in 1995. Would people have respected the Virtual Boy more? Would it have sold 10 or 20 more systems? We'll never know, but this port is really cool. Well, that's the Virtual Boy for you. I think it's way worse than Sega's 32X, both as a concept and in the quality of the games that it played. It's kind of interesting that the Sega 32X gets a little bit more hate, don't you think? Anyway, I'm glad I found my Virtual Boy for $14 at a thrift store in the box. That's about what I think the system is worth. Still, there are some games that are worth playing on that, and I'd love to see them ported to the Switch or whatever with some color. So what do you think of the Virtual Boy? Let me know. In the meantime, thank you for watching GameSack. Are you feeling down in the dumps? Have you lost all ambition in your life and semblance of a distinct personality? Yeah. Then you need the Nintendo Virtual Boy! Where the hell did that thing come from?! With the Nintendo Virtual Boy, you don't need to be distracted by all three primary colors. We know you don't have time for that, so you only have to deal with one! Seriously, it appeared right out of thin air! Virtual Boy gives you a taste of virtual reality with games that play in all three dimensions. What kind of devil device is this? 
Virtual Boy offers hours of fun with a huge library of games with that classic Nintendo feel. Monochrome 3D game systems materializing spontaneously is not a future I'm prepared for! The Virtual Boy won't remain in stock for long, so be sure to hurry! Holy crap, it disappeared into nowhere! I'm beginning to question reality as we know it! Visit your favorite retailer today and ask them for the Nintendo Virtual Boy. Ah, that thing is witchcraft!